All right, lesson 16, collision detection. Overview, the class learns about collision detection on the computer. Pairs explore how a computer could use sprite location and size properties and math to detect whether two sprites are touching. The class then uses is touching block to create different effects when sprites collide, including playing sounds. Last, they use their new skills to improve the side scroller game that they started in the last lesson. These ads. All right. All right, let's take a look at this frog jumping game. Okay, cool. It looks like the game from the last lesson, but the frog moves the mushroom if it hits it. What code do you think would help the computer to know whether two sprites are touching? Well, in the overview, we read that there is a going to be a block called is touching. All right, let's the code below uses the sprites x and y positions to check whether they are touching. It will change the balloon sprites animation when the tack touches it. Use the arrow keys to move the tack until it touches the balloon. Okay, cool. So we see it made a little pop sprite. Do this. You do not need to change any code on this level. Read the if statements inside the draw loop and find the different sprite properties and how they are compared. Discuss the code with your partner. All right, well, let's look at the if statements. Um, okay, if tech.x is greater than balloon.x. All right, so I think basically what we're supposed to be noticing here is that this is a lot of complexity, and hopefully they're going to give us a way to uh, simplify that. Is touching. Writing out the math each time you want to check whether two sprites are touching can take a while. So a programmer created the is touching block, which can check whether one sprite is touching another sprite, the target. The computer is still doing the same math as in the previous program, but you don't have to worry about it because another programmer already did all the work. Cool. Do this. It looks like you left one of the parameters empty. Inside the draw loop, drag the is touching block into the if block. Okay, you can click show me where and it'll show you. Uh, so is touching is what they want us to put in here. Is touching. Okay. Don't forget to change. Okay, yeah. So change sprite to balloon. Make sure you are spelling these words right. And change target to tack. All right, now let's see. Cool. Cool. All right, so now we have that code. Applesauce. When the apple hits the blender, the blender should turn on. Do this. Use the is touching block to make the blender shake back and forth when the apple sprite touches the blender sprite. The shaking motion is already coded using the random block. So you just have to check when two sprites are touching. Challenge, can you make the apple disappear when it touches the blender? Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so if... And what are our sprites called? Blender and apple. Okay, if apple... Apple is touching blender. Okay, so what happens? Okay, so it shakes, but the apple is still visible. So uh, if apple is touching blender, uh, we also want this, yeah, visible. Uh, apple dot visible equals false. I think that should work. Cool. Awesome. Making sounds. You can also use code to play a blender sound. Do this. Use the play sound block from the world drawer to play this sound when the apple touches the blender. You will need to paste the address of the sound into the block so it looks like this. Okay. Play sound URL. Okay. We also want that inside the if statement. So let's do this. And we got to copy this. Uh, all right, 
hopefully this works. Unexpected token. Great. Uh, maybe it needs the, the quotation marks. Perfect. Perfect. All right, rainbow horse. When the rainbow touches the horse, it should turn into a unicorn. Do this. Use the if is touching and set animation blocks to change the horse sprite's image when the rainbow touches it. The unicorn image is already loaded in the animation tab for you. Okay, so the unicorn is already created. The variable we have is horse and rainbow. So, okay, we're going to create an if statement inside the draw loop. And we're going to say if rainbow is touching horse, rainbow is touching horse, uh, we are going to set the animation, set the horse animation to unicorn, I think. I think that's it. Yep. Awesome. That's it. Okay. Debugging collisions. The balloon is popping before the tack touches it. When sprites aren't doing what you expect, you can use the debug block to get more information about why the sprites are behaving that way. Can you find out what's wrong in the code below? Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So, if if you look, the tack will pop the balloon, but it hasn't even touched the balloon. So that's what it's asking. Can you figure out why? Do this. Run the code. Use the arrow keys. We did that. In the code below, change balloon dot debug. Okay. From false to true. So this is set to false. So now we want to change it to true. Uh, let's see if that changes anything. Oh, we can't figure out what true. Uh, okay, I spelled it wrong. Uh, okay, so when it crosses that green square, that's when it pops. Add a new debug block to the code and set the tax sprites debug property to true. Okay. Balloon.debug. Uh, tack debug, set it to true. Okay, run the code again and discuss with your partner why the balloon is popping early. Well, as we said, as soon as the uh, squares, the green squares, uh, overlap, then the balloon pops. Can you use the animations tab to resize the balloon picture so it pops at the correct time? Yes, you can do that. And I don't need to demonstrate that. You should be able to go into the animation tab and figure that out. Okay? And I want you to do that. For the sake of the video, I'm going to skip it. Scoreboard. You can also use is touching to decide whether you should increase the score. In this game, the score is stored inside the score variable. It is displayed on the screen using the text block. Okay, so you might recognize this from uh, last, I think last week or two weeks ago, you, you should have been doing lesson 14 and we used variables that kept count of something. Okay, so here someone created a variable called score and they want us Oh, okay, this this is the code right here that displays the scoreboard, okay? Do this. Use the if and is touching blocks to determine whether the bunny has caught the carrot. Okay, that's simple enough. Okay, uh, make the bunny jump when it... Right, I'm looking for a comment that tells us where to put that if statement. Yes, okay, right here. Uh, when bunny touches carrot, add one to the score and put the carrot back off the screen. Okay, so we are going to use a counter pattern here. But first, we're going to create an if statement. If bunny is touching carrot. Do we have variables called bunny and carrot? Let's double check. Yes, bunny and carrot. Carrot. Perfect. If bunny is touching carrot, then we have to do 
the three following things, okay? Use the counter pattern on the score variable to increase the score. How are we going to do that? Score equals score plus one, okay? So remember, you don't want a variable block. You just want, what's the, what's the name of this block? Assign a variable. So we're assigning a variable a score. Score equals score plus one. And I think that should work, even though I just typed it in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, all right, it's working for now. Reset the carrot's x position off the right-hand side of the screen. So all three of those things, these things that they're asking us to do are all going to go inside this if statement, I'm pretty sure. Uh, reset the carrot's x position off the right-hand side of the screen. So let's see what the x position is down here when we go to the right-hand side of the screen. It's about 400, so we'll change it to 420. So it starts about right here. Um, so caret.x, spread.x, equals 450, we'll say caret.x equals 450, okay? Uh, reset the caret's x position, set the caret's y position to a random number, so we're doing the same thing. But now we're gonna use a random number, caret, let's go into math, random number, it says between 10 and 390, so 10, 390 and you should be good now yeah so you get one point because the carrot resets and it goes to a random number this is perfect let's go to 10 improve your game now that you know how to use is touching and play sound you can make some fun things happen when your sprites run into each other okay so this is our frog game Note, the play sound block now has an extra parameter. Okay, do this. Add at least two effects when your sprites collide. Okay, uh, so let's see. All right, well, I guess we'll add an if statement. <coughs> if, hmm, frog is touching mushroom. Frog is touching mushroom. Uh, hmm. We want to reset the mushroom's position. So I guess mushroom.x. We'll do the same exact thing we did in the last level. Mushroom.x equals 450. Mushroom.y. Uh, we'll set it to a random number. Nah, 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 uh. No, because we want the mushrooms to be on the ground. Mushrooms don't just grow in midair. Uh, so we will, how about we'll decrease the score? Yeah, okay. To do that, we got to create a score variable. So let's go to the top. And you got to create a score variable. Score equals zero. Okay. Now, I say if the frog touches the mushroom, you get minus one. So let's put that in our equals score minus one. Okay, but now we need the scoreboard to display. How are we going to do that? Well, let's open level nine in a new tab, and we're going to use coder's best friend, which is copy and paste. And draw score. Let's copy this. And then we go back to 10. And at the top of our draw loop, we're going to insert that. I'm going to click Show Text. And below this, that's where I'm going to paste it. All right, hopefully this works. Let's reset and run. Awesome. Cool, it works. I think this counts as two effects. Uh, and I think you should be done. <laughs> do this, read this, okay, read this, and I do expect you to also do the lesson extras, okay?